Here we fill the uh, and that's where I'm going up there. That's the path coming up to the gate, uh, which I'm about to go through. Walk a bit and then take a left and head up towards that peak there. Steel nut. Took my left after the wall. There's old water. Nearly there. Easy. Twenty to seven in the morning. Once I got inside the tent, I just got inside the sleeping bag and I've slept. <laughs> I didn't go back out. But the cloud came over and it rained and I was just snug as a bug in this tent and sleeping bag. In fact, I think I'll have another hour's sleep now. It's a weekday, so I don't think anybody's going to be up here too soon in this. Still bringing the bindi up. I know I was saying that it ran out on a camp before. I mean, I did have it on full beam for a couple of hours. Um, but if you if you have it on a lower beam, it's going to last. But I'll, I'm using my old dead torch. But what happened was I was charging my old head, head torch up and I was looking for the, the spare batteries. And I, I just thought, I wonder how much three spare batteries weighs. So I put them on the scales, coming in at 35 grams. Well, that's what this head torch weighs. So I thought, well, I might as well just carry this up, and it's great inside the tent. I mean, 200 lumens, but the light it gives off is just really, really nice light. And it means if I have to change, well, I don't have to change batteries anymore, and just, this gives me more options. You know, if, if, if something happens to the other head torch, I just put this straight on my head, which is ideal, in a, you know, if a situation happens. And I've used this last night, I didn't even use the other head torch and I've already put a full charge on it, ready to, this one's ready to go again 
charged up the north arm. Uh, absolutely ideal, ideal. It's a, it's a good setup I've got that way now. now uh, just a couple of bits to pack away in the tents it'll be a couple of weeks before I can get back out again I think one of the things I'll, I will change this, this winter as well I'll do less less bar camping if I think it's going to be really bad weather I can remember I think it was last winter when I did what was it Barrow it took me two goes to do that hill the first time was a failed wild camp. I got to the top, couldn't get pitched. It was just too, too bad the weather. Came back with a bit of a chip on my shoulder and just came straight back on the next time I was off and did it. But I think I spent, it was at least, it was something like 17 hours stuck inside a tent. And I didn't really say a lot. And I've had a few camps like that where, but especially Barrow where, Barrow, I don't really feel as though I've wild camped on top of Barrow, even though I have. I don't really feel as though I have because I was, it was just ten pounds from beginning to end, basically. And I want to do less of that this winter, which means I'll ease up and then, you know, then I'll want it more in the spring. spring. But I think it will definitely be a quiet year. I won't be... This year, I've done so many wild camps, but there was a lot of factors. There was a lot of factors involved in that. Next year, I won't be as busy. Maybe it's the year after, but not, not next year. That's how it's looking anyway. Right, I'm trying to pack away. And that's steel nut under the belt. Enjoyed it.